This was me driving the brand new GX550, and I was very excited. So was this guy, rushing over to check out the nice wheel articulation. This guy was Lexus chief engineer Koji Tsukasaki. He designed the GX550, yet he was still just as excited as me, someone seeing it for the first time. Because for those who truly understand off-road, big flex never gets old. So this is my FJ Cruiser? Oh, oh very nice. <laughs> Articulation and suspension travel are extremely important for off-road, but few manufacturers ever mention them, not even for the flagship off-road models. But to my surprise, Lexus deliberately emphasize wheel articulation on the new GX550. They even publish numbers in the official spec sheet. And that was a first for Toyota. Wait, the new Overtrail can articulate 24 inches? To put it into context, I measured the articulation of a stock GX460 and it was 15.4. A stock FJ Cruiser, 14.5. Only on my heavily modified long travel FJ, I was able to get 24 inches. So it is just crazy a stock Lexus can now have the same amount of flex. Or does it? Join me for a deep dive into the brand new suspension design of the GX550. How much articulation does it actually have? What are the true mechanical improvements over GX460? And at last, does the new EKDSS truly live up to the hype? All right, let's get started. Hi, welcome to Tinker's Adventure. I'm Kai. Although I really appreciate Lexus for publishing the articulation spec, these numbers just sounds too crazy to me. So during Lexus' first ride press event, I stopped the GX at peak articulation, jumped out of the car, and whipped out a tape measure. Anyway, I started measuring. Everyone around me was like, by measuring the gap between the tire and the fender, I was able to calculate the front and rear articulation respectively. And here is what I got. The new independent front suspension flexed 8.8 .8 inches, while the rear did 11.0 a total of 19.8 inches of articulation. Granted, this was not the crazy 24 inches I was looking for. But to be fair, 19.8 was still extremely impressive. To put things into context, it was a 29% increase over a stock GX460, and a whopping 37% over a stock FJ Cruiser. For the past 10 years, I have also wheeled with a lot of modified Toyotas, and most of those would not flex like the GX550. For example, even after installing extended travel suspension front and rear, I was able to get the GX460 to 18.3, which is still less than the bone stock GX550. But let's circle back. Why did my number differ so much from Lexus' number? Nerdy as I am, I asked Koji, the chief engineer. I show him how I defined and measure articulation, and he actually acknowledged my approach. Yes, it is. Oh, so it's very similar. Yes, same same kind of measuring. Okay. Method. Yes. So it's diagonal. Just mm. nanameter, nanameter, or aggregate, or aggregate. Okay. Yes. However, we could not get into the weeds on exactly why our numbers differ. The, yeah, so the, the TS, the official TS evaluation methods that we use are what got this number. So, oh, okay. yeah, obviously that, that's the variance, but we yeah, can't yeah. do exactly. Makes sense. But overall... On this chart by Lexus, using the Toyota standard, Lexus claimed the GX460 had 21.1 inches of articulation, which was also higher than mine 15.4 
And this was what Koji suggests to look at. So rather, so for us, I mean, the fundamental the direction of thought process is the same. So uh, we, for us, we would rather have you look not at the absolute values, but the rate of increase and in yes. improvement per value. So yes. that might be better to compare yes. testing methods. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, today, I measure. Mean, <laughs> yeah. 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 But wait a minute. If we look at the delta between new versus old, Lexus data showed plus 3.4 inches, or a 16% increase. Meanwhile, my data showed plus 4.4 inches, or a 29% increase. Hey, guess what? Lexus is actually underselling their own work. I really wish all manufacturers could settle on one transparent standard to measure articulation. I personally prefer Corner Travel Index because it is independent from vehicle wheelbase and best simulates real-world off-roading. Currently, there is just no way for us consumers to cross-compare different models. For example, the number one competitor for the GX550 would be the Defender 110. It claims 19.7 inches of articulation which is very close to my number for the GX550, or Lexus number for the GX460. But in real life, nah, man, it was not even close. I have seen many new Defender going off-road. The actual articulation is pretty poor. It flexes significantly less than the old GX460, or any last-gen Toyotas. So the new GX550 will be miles ahead in terms of off-road articulation. Now we understand how much the new GX can actually articulate. The next question is, what physically changed to unlock these improvements? Many people may attribute the higher articulation entirely to the new eKDSS, which replaces the old KDSS. However, that is only half the story, and I will explain why. KDSS stands for Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System. Because the name contains suspension system, many believe it represents the entire suspension of the GX. That is misconception number one. KDSS is just a hydraulic front and rear sway bar disconnect. The main part of the suspension, like springs, shocks, and control arms, are all separate from KDSS. For the GX460, every single one is equipped with KDSS. But the rest of the suspension has the exact same layout as that of an FJ or a 5th Gen 4Runner. For the new GX550, only the overtrow has eKDSS. The new premium and luxury trims are actually downgraded to conventional sway bars. But here is something interesting. If we bring back this chart from Lexus, even with no sway bar disconnect, the new premium and luxury already has more articulation than the GX460. This tells us, KDSS aside, the rest of the suspension also gained a substantial upgrade. And this is the second half of the story few people know about. The issue is, on this chart, the three vehicles had three different sway bars. So we can't really extrapolate how much upgrade came from eKDSS and how much came from the main suspension. But luckily, I have more measurements. Remember, the GX460 and the FJ Cruiser shares the same base suspension. They actually have the exact same length shocks. However, if we straight up remove the front and rear sway bars on the FJ, it will have more rear articulation than the GX460. But why? This is because in the old KDSS, the two hydraulic cylinders front and rear are interconnected. So if one cylinder is compressed, the other one tends to extend by a similar amount. They aren't necessarily one-to-one -one every time because of the hydraulic accumulators in the middle, but they aren't fully independent either. For the new electronic KDSS, the biggest change is that the front and rear sway bars are now fully independent. So in slow speed off-road, it truly behaves like no sway bars at all. 
Therefore, by my measurement, the new GX has more rear articulation than the old GX, but it has the same amount as the no sway bar FJ. This makes sense as the new rear suspension didn't fundamentally change. Both old and new 5-link solid rear axle have very similar layouts. The new lower control arm actually have the exact same length as the previous generation, just a little beefier. Therefore, between the old and new GX, the increase in rear articulation mostly came from EKDSS. However, the independent front suspension is a different story. As you can see, KDSS on the GX460 already unlocks all the factory IFS could offer. But the new GX showed another 46% increase. So the increased front articulation actually came from the base suspension itself. Don't get me wrong, the new EKDSS also has to be upgraded to allow that extra travel, which we will discuss later. But if we simply put EKDSS on the old GX460, we won't necessarily see more front articulation as it was limited by the IFS itself. To increase the range of motion of an IFS, there are two things we can do. One, increase the maximum operating angle. Or two, make every suspension components longer. This is why my long travel FJ looks so wide, as it has three and a half inch longer control arms. So the front track is seven inches wider. I also have aftermarket high angle CV axles to push it even further. Those cost me thousands of dollars just in parts, but that is what it takes to get more flex out of IFS. The new GX550 actually come with all those from the factory, just not that extreme. First, the inner CV changed from a tripod joint to a larger double offset joint, which is exactly what my long travel FJ has, except the GX also come with Lexus reliability. Well, mine does not. As to longer control arms, according to the product spec, the new GX has a 3.2 inches wider track. You might think 3.2 divided by 2 is 1.6 inches per side. So we basically have a plus 1.6 long travel kit. Well, not so fast. The entire frame of the new GX also got wider. We also have significant changes to the steering knuckles and the wheel offsets. All those affect the track width. So on paper, we don't really know how much longer the control arms are. But nerdy as I am, I actually prepared some true scale control arm templates from the old suspension. During the press event, I stuck them on the new suspension using magnet, so I could have a direct visual comparison. Using my template, I found the new lower control arm was roughly 1.4 inches longer. Not bad. But here is something interesting. The upper control arm did not get much longer. Why? After speaking with the chief engineer, I learned another key improvement on the new IFS was reduced kingpin offset. The kingpin offset, we've, max, we've optimized the suspension geometry as well, so mm. all of that is contributing. Kingpin offset is also called scrub radius. It is this distance from the steering axis to the center of the tire. By making the lower control arm longer, we tilt the steering axis more, thus reducing the kingpin offset. Kingpin offset is basically a leverage. Forces from the road will use it to back steer the front tires. So a lower kingpin offset will have less steering kickback and less stress on the tie rods, which are good for both on and off road. In my opinion, all these mechanical improvements to the base suspension is equally big deal as the new EKDSS. And here is a comment from Koji I really liked. Control features are important, but really it's more important to, to develop uh, the basic, yes. basic fundamentals the of the platform. platform. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And then on top of that, we'll add electronic controls. Yes, yes, I like that, I love that. And even for the EKDSS, the biggest upgrade I saw 
was actually mechanical. Like we mentioned before, the front and rear sway bars are now independent. That was all from how the hydraulic system is routed. It was not because of electronic control. The old rear mechanism lit behind the axle, which was prone to getting hit by obstacles. The new mechanism now live in front of the axle and tucked away inside the frame rail. It also uses a mechanical linkage to amplify stroke, so we might be able to run even longer shocks. The old front mechanism only has one cylinder and the bar pivots about the fixed link on the passenger side. This old setup was barely enough to allow full flex of the stock IFS, and that one cylinder would hang down pretty low when extended. The new system now replaced the fixed link with the second hydraulic cylinder to shear the work. The stabilizer bar now pivots about a center bushing, which is much more symmetrical. How the bar was connected to the lower control arm was also updated, which alleviates mechanical binding. All these mechanical changes were how the new system can keep up with the redesigned IFS. Here is a bigger question. In the past, KDSS was the only sway bar disconnect for Toyotas. But with the new GAF platform, Toyota developed a true stabilizer disconnect mechanism, SDM, which exists on the new Land Cruiser 250 series, 4th Gen Tacoma, and 6th Gen Forerunner. So why do they still develop the EKDSS, which is a lot more complex? Some may say EKDSS disconnect both front and rear stabilizer, where the SDM only disconnect the front. That is true, but it is not the main reason. The true benefits of EKDSS is actually not how it can disconnect the sway bars. Instead, it is how it can connect them. I will make a dedicated video on EKDSS versus SDM. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, I will see you in the next one.